By the end of tonight, Anton Fraser will be dead. But first, I have to convince the world that I'm his biggest fan. Do these sunglasses make me look too handsome? I say. I don't want to steal the limelight. Lenny glances at me, a licorice bootlace hanging from her mouth and dark braids dangling over her face. She goes back to her magazine, ignoring the street vendor's glare. You look like a dorky Harry Styles. I replace the sunglasses on the rotating display and pick another pair. You know how to make a boy feel special. What about these? I crane my head to see my reflection in the little mirror. The red frames stand out against my pale, freckled skin. I swish my hair to one side. Chestnut waves skim the collar of a bedazzled leather jacket that belonged to my ex, Rose. It sits heavy on my shoulders. Rose would have told me to get the damn glasses. Hell, she would have strolled off without paying for them, and no one would have said a thing. Rose was stop and stare beautiful. She was a lot of other things, too, but nearly a year after her death, it's her face that most people remember. The beautiful dead girl found in a teenage megastar's pool, as if that's all that matters. I'll have these, I say, handing a ten-pound note to the street vendor. Lenny pointedly tucks the magazine into the rack. Anton Fraser's grinning face watches me from the cover. Anton makes his move, reads the headline. Ever since he announced his stunt, the bastard is everywhere. There are no consequences for him. He gets to wipe his reputation clean and relaunch his empire. But I'm stuck with my police warning, school suspension, and no future. Sirens approach. An ambulance noisily weaves through the bumper-to-bumper -bumper Oxford Street traffic, forcing black cabs and cyclists to mount the sidewalk. It's all background noise, drowned out by a shit ton of dark thoughts that I don't want to think. Why am I here again? Lenny says. I have schoolwork to finish. I don't function well on my own, I mutter, still glaring at Anton's picture. It's true. Other people get me out of my head. Pretty sure I'd get lost in there if I spent too much time alone. Do I look like a plug? Lenny says. Huh? I glance up at the sharpness of her tone. Her warm brown skin is flushed, arms folded. To fill the holes in your life. I don't know if she's teasing... Serious, or both. So I escape to a public bench, dispersing a million dirty pigeons that were loitering on the cracked sidewalk. <laughs>